Hi everybody, it's Agnes and welcome to a interview with a very special person, Josiah. Welcome to our little pod space on Zoom today. <laughs> yes, awesome. So glad to be here. It's my pleasure. <laughs> oh, I was really just happy to interview you because you and I have a mutual love of Neville Goddard and you know, I know he's changed your life a lot and mine too. So I wanted to hear a bit more about your story and where this began for you and what happened. We had a little bit of a chat behind the scenes, but I know the viewers would love to hear a bit about your personal experience. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think I'll just start by talking a little bit about how I discovered Neville, my, my love for Neville. Yeah. Uh, so I guess... I would say that my journey of waking up really started in earnest in 2014. Uh, I was kind of going through some transitions in life and it's, it's interesting how that always kind of lines up with like things happening in life that you kind of make new discoveries about life. It's kind of the way the game is played, I suppose. But yeah, I started to wake up in 2014. I, I kind of, uh, it's when I discovered Abraham Hicks, for example, and I kind of started hearing this other way of looking at the world that was familiar in a way, but also very new in a way. And then in about, it was fall of 2016, I was listening to an audiobook of Genevieve Berend. And after the, auto, auto, the, the book was done, just on autoplay on YouTube, this next video started playing. And it was a recording of one of Neville's lectures. And I heard his voice in my headphones for the first time, I actually remember the moment I was yeah. doing dishes. I was standing in the kitchen at the sink and I was doing dishes and they had my headphones in. I was listening to audiobooks and I heard his voice. And I remember I had to dry my hands <laughs> to pick up my phone to be like, who is this? Like, what is happening? <laughs> so I dry my hands, I pick up the phone. I'm like, Neville Goddard, never heard of him before, B brand new. But I loved what he was saying so much mm -hmm. that that moment began kind of like a, a Neville binge for me. From that moment forward, the more I listened to him, the more I was like, I, I need to hear everything from this man. Like, I want to know everything this man knows. It's just something, I mean, if, if you've listened to Neville, you know, there's something about the conviction and the passion, for sure. But also the eloquence mm. of his words. Nobody says it quite like Neville. Nobody says it like Neville. And it just, it quite literally blew me away. Yeah. And that started this journey of like kind of like the vacuum cleaner of I, I want to just like suck up everything I possibly can, you know, all of this wisdom from, from this man. So that was 2016 really went through a lot. And just, I remember I was listening every single day for hours a day. And you shared earlier that you were, you know, you, when you first found him, you're just like reading the book and reading and reading, couldn't sleep. You were, you know, so yeah. electric, these, this, this information, this knowledge, this understanding. And then in, um, Let's see, it was uh, spring of 2017 is when I first had the idea to read a Neville lecture because I started to realize, you know, a lot of, particularly back then, a lot of the, the audio recordings of his voice were kind of poor quality. There was like maybe mm -hmm. a lot of compression noises or interference or static. A lot of those have been cleaned up now, which I'm incredibly grateful for. But mm -hmm. back then in particular, it was very hard to hear a lot of, of what he was saying. So I was like, I'm going to go see if I can find you know, the transcribed text. And I found a whole library of them. And I quickly realized, I was like, man, I'm, I'm probably not the only person that would love to hear these beautiful words spoken clearly. Mm. So that's where the idea came to, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it out loud. I'm going to record myself reading it yeah. and post it on YouTube and just see what happens. And so that, that kind of began the adventure. That was two years ago. And then my life looks completely different now from head to toe. So it's, all, yeah. it's, it's been a whole ride. Yeah, beautiful. It is um, getting Neville off the page and then putting it into practice with yeah. the imaginal scenes and also, as he talks about so often, carrying the state with us throughout the day is... Um, it's a continuous practice at improving that. And it's a game you play between you and you on a daily basis. Well said. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, what do you think you apply the most from Neville currently? Like what things are you really getting soaked into? Mm, 
I would have to say feeling it real. Yeah. Really feeling it real. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I, with, I think with anything, it's like whenever you come across something particularly like this, it's like the expansion in consciousness happens first. And then it's like your life has to expand to catch up, if that makes mm. sense. So I comprehended this idea of feeling it real. You know, when he first started talking about it, like I started to comprehend, like my consciousness started to expand to comprehend it. But then it's been this kind of building the, the neural pathways, building kind of like the support in, in my consciousness to like really step in and fully embody that. Mm. And it's just been continuous evolution in that regard. Like I feel like I'm always growing and expanding and getting a little bit clearer in my ability to truly feel it real right yeah. now yeah. In, in every moment, not just sometimes, not just when I'm running imaginal pictures, but always like really holding that state and living it. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, easy to say and takes practice to do, doesn't it? That's the point. Yeah. It takes really? a lot of practice. Yes. Yeah. Just so people know, where are you in the world? Yeah, I live just north of Boston, Massachusetts, in the yep. U.S. Yep. Yeah, Lovely. have for a number of years now, yes. And you are currently running some Neville groups with people. Do you yes. want to mention that a little bit? I would love to, yeah. So last month, I founded the Neville Goddard School of Imagination, and it was in April. And we started with a 99-day focused exploration of the wisdom that Neville Goddard teaches. So the idea with this here is that one, again, your consciousness expands, you start to understand that like this is truth, like what I'm never saying, like you start to clue into the truth of it. Really the only thing that makes sense after that is to develop the habits and practice of mastery mm. of imagination. Really, really kind of, yeah, just really, really tuning into that space of how do I master my imagination? And so I, I, kind of became aware of this. It was like, I want to do this for myself. I want to do a 99 day focus where yep. every single day I'm applying the, the principles, the tools, what I, you know, what Neville teaches, but on the next level, on an expanded level, it's actually mm. the name of it, next level Neville. It's a 99 day course. And I, I want to do it myself. And why not open it up and see if there's people that want to do it with me? <laughs> so put out the call energetically before I ever put words to a video. I was like, I felt it real. I was like, what would it feel like to be exploring Neville Goddard with people from all over the world? And yep. we're all focused on this all at the same time for this 99 day intense focus. Yeah. Really felt that real, put out the call. Um, started talking about it on YouTube within really short order. I seated 77 students yep. from 14 countries. 21 U.S. states. Yeah. And we are currently today is day 53 yeah. of, of 99. And really our, our approach to it is, um, I've been taking a lot of college classes over the last couple of years, just local on campus evening type college classes, just because I'm very curious about the world. And I, yeah. I love the exploration that the college classes give me. Yeah. And so, and I've built this course. I was like, I, if I could study anything in a college class, it would be what Neville Goddard teaches. So I'm going to create a college class on Neville Goddard, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like this um, academic, but also like class discussion, group discussion type approach to it. Okay. And it's been awesome. It's, it's so been amazing. So are you doing like a Zoom thing where everybody's on at the same time? Yep. Go to meeting. Yes. Yeah. So is that live? Yeah, it's live. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's the same time every day? Uh, so there's, there's slightly different content every day. Yeah. Uh, we do do live guided meditations most days. Yeah. And, you know, so, so for instance, today was to watch a Neville lecture. Yeah. And then respond within the class group, what stood out to you from yeah. the Neville lecture, both his quotes and also what you were present to yourself. Yeah. And the idea is, is, you know, you have 50 some people doing that. And pretty soon you start to build this body of like, these are really the golden nuggets out of this 50 minute lecture. Mm. And this is like, you know, you're hearing it not just from Neville, but also from your fellow students. And it's just lovely. It's next, le it's next level. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Ah, oh, how satisfying. Extremely satisfying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great word for it. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So, okay. Give me a bit of a, 
just on a daily basis, yeah, this is obviously part of what you do. What what's your other bits and pieces that you fill in with? Yeah, um, you mean with the with the course? With anything? Like, are oh, you doing? Pretty... Like, are you consulting? Are you working oh, outside? Yeah. Of that, doing other things? What? Because you know, when you work from home, it's always a bits and pieces. Yes. Scrambled egg version. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like you've done this before. <laughs> oh, it's awesome to talk to someone so like-minded. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it feels really good to own my time. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and even better than that, to spend my time, invest my time, as Neville would say, yep. doing what I love. Yeah. So it does look like a couple different things. Um, this 99 day course is my focus at the moment, yeah. but I'm also planning a student retreat to the island of Barbados. Yeah course for for the Neville group so that that's been um I spent a lot of time really getting immersed in the feeling of Barbados yeah if that makes sense which you know is, is ironic and, and beautiful on so many levels yeah but um I also I also trade currencies that's yeah. a, a big part of my income as well yes okay which is interestingly enough that's something I attracted to me yeah. by really starting to feel real the state of wealth yeah and it's like, you know, you know how this works. It's like you really start to feel it real and then synchronicity start to happen. The bridge incident starts to build itself. You start to meet people, get int introduced to mentors, start to have experiences. People come and bring things to you. You know, Anya, you, you brought me something earlier. You're like, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but there's this book, you know, whatever. And I wrote it down. <laughs> I've just learned to trust. That's what yeah. a bridge of incident looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So doing, doing some of that, um, I actually just became a, a, a pet father, if I can say it that way, for the first time <laughs> a couple of days ago. Uh, manifested the perfect cat. I, I don't know how oh, else to say it. Nice. I was, um, my partner and I, we, we were feeling real having the perfect cat. I mean, we knew we wanted, you know, a beautiful animal in, in the house and just like kind of adding this beautiful feline energy to the space. Yep. But um, it was this multi-month process of like really getting clear on like, okay, what do we want it to look like? What do we want the cat to feel like in terms of temperament? Yes. Like, what do we want its behaviors to be? Like, do we want it to be, you know, like cuddle with us all the time, cuddle with us some of the time? Like, you know, what, what, it, what do we want that to be? And just like kind of talking it out, going online, reading the personalities of cats at adoption agencies and like getting even clearer. Yeah. Um, there's a couple times where it kind of seemed like maybe the right one was available and then it just wouldn't pan out for some reason. So it was yeah. like, okay, don't get disappointed. The right one is coming. Just kind of hold the feeling. Mm. And then sure enough, I posted, this is the other thing. I just got to tell you the story. It's like a manifestation story. Yeah. We're like really feeling it real. And we're also buying all of the things that pet parents need. Yeah. So we're buying litter boxes. We're buying food dishes. We're buying you know, this cat condo where the cat can like hop up way high and like sit by the window. And, you know, we buy the, the, the monthly cat litter subscription delivery service, you know, we don't even have a cat, but like we're feeling it real. So, you know, she might as well be here. Right. And so my, my partner, Carrie, she, she builds the cat condo and I take a picture of it and I put it on my Instagram story and I draw a little emoji of a kitten on the top level of the cat condo. Yeah. And on the words I put, now all we need is a kitty. Yeah. Right? So I was envisioning there's a kitty perched on the top of this cat condo that we yeah. just built. Yeah. I kid you not, within <laughs> seconds, a friend of mine replies to my story on Instagram. A friend of mine local here in Boston I've known for years. Beautiful yep. person. I love her. And she's like, would you like to adopt my cat? And I was like, I was like, I was like hmm maybe do you have pictures okay yeah she sends me pictures i'm like i'm like this is a beautiful cat okay looks good so far what's her temperament what's she like she starts repeating back to me the same description of what my partner and i were speaking to each other out loud like this is what we want our cat to be yeah and i was just like yes <laughs> yes yes i want i can't wait to meet your cat so Two, two days. So I posted that picture on Thursday. On Saturday, I met our new house cat, Luna, at my friend's house. Yeah. Uh, my friend was unable to keep her anymore just for extenuating circumstances. So I was also able to bless my friend uh, by taking her cat and putting her in a beautiful home. Yeah. And um, it just, I've just been, 
I know some people be like, oh, it's, I don't know. For me, it's a huge thing. It's a yeah. huge thing. It's like, particularly because I haven't been one in, I haven't been a pet parent in uh, more than 10 years. So yeah. it's yeah. a big thing for me. So that's yeah. been a big part of my day recently too, is just um, really basking in this beautiful yeah. cat energy. I don't really don't know how else to say it. Mm. And I'd love that moment where you see the, absolute like that dovetailing of what you had imagined is the exact fit hand in glove to what you actually see in front of you i love that moment you just go oh my god there it is again yeah yes. <laughs> yeah it's is so funny so you know the cat she, she took a little a couple of days to warm up right and uh last night for the first time my partner and i were laying on the couch and she hops up right onto the blanket in between us and curls up in a little Aww. circle and Carrie and I look at each other. We're just like, we've been <laughs> imagining this moment. This is so perfect. You know, we high five each other right over, right over little little Luna. Lovely. It's just, just beautiful. It's, it's awesome. Lovely. Is she there with you now? She's she's not in the room. She's ah. napping. She's napping in the, in the guest bedroom. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely story. Lovely story. It's um, it can this imaginal work can be applied to everything that's what i love yes it really is big medium small it really yeah. doesn't matter the size of whatever you're trying to go for it you're, really you're, doesn't you're absolutely right and what i've come to realize is it's not the size of, of what you're going for you know like you said big small it's the clarity yeah it, it's how clear can you get yeah how clear can you get because you know, Neville says, you know, if the imaginal picture is muddy, you're not there yet. But exactly. when it's crystal clear, yep. you know, it's like um, one of my favorite sayings. This actually comes from a TV show I've been watching called The OA. Ah, you know, I, the OA? yeah, I do. Yes. It's on Netflix. Yeah. yeah on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's this moment in the final episode of season two where the where Hap, the doctor says, uh, the human mind contains the multiverse, a garden of forking paths. Mm. The words, right? Yeah. I just, oh my God, the words. But he's so right. It's so true. And it's like at any given moment, and this is, this is something that's like, you have to really step in and embody the consciousness of this and then put it to work for you. At any moment, Anyas, we're standing on the brink of any number of forking paths in our garden this this garden that we dwell in which is yeah. our mind the garden of eden as neville says yeah. and at any moment the feeling that we're holding real is aligning like pointing at the destination pointing down this particular path it's going to yeah. take us to a certain place or take us along a certain yeah. journey i should say because it's yeah. never about the destination and yeah. at any given moment you're standing in the center of that garden and there's all these mm. paths and when you choose a feeling and hold it real and you get really, really clear, yeah. make no mistake about it, you are standing on that path that includes that physical manifestation. You are. Yeah. It might be a day. It might be a week. It might be 20 years. Every yeah. seed has its appointed hour, but it's all about the clarity. It's about how clear, how razor, laser clear can yeah. you be about what you want. Yeah. And then understanding that along that path towards, you know, you're walking this journey, holding that feeling real. Yeah. Anything that comes up that might initially feel like a disappointment is a gift. And the gift is the opportunity to get even clearer. Yeah. And when you get to that point where you start to realize that things don't happen to you, they happen for you to help you get clearer on what you want. Mm -hmm. You'll notice. This is literally what every law of attraction teacher says, but they all use different words. Different words, yeah. So th this, this is the secret. It's like yeah. the clearer you get, yeah. and you understand that everything that comes your way is to help you get even clearer, yeah. you continue to hold that feeling, you will walk that path. Mm. Those physical manifestations will, are aligned with that path, and you will experience the blooming and the growing in your garden. Absolutely. And a great example of that is the story of the doctor and his wife in The Law and the Promise where they wanted the completed apartment building. Yes. That was a great example of clarity, yes. of focus between yes. two people, husband and wife, and 
as the wife said, the husband and wife were talking and one of them said to the other, let's ring the contractor on the sign that's down the road. And then the other one said, if we were living in the completed building, we wouldn't be calling a contractor. Yes. I love that. And yes. That is a moment of you've already created it. Yes. Stop backpedaling and try and get it to move by you poking and prodding by ringing this guy on the sign. Yes. And that story I think is one of the best. Well, that's been one of the most influential stories in my life. I've always gone mm -hmm. back and dissected the parts of that and gone, okay, I want to manifest this. Where am I stuck when I reread the mechanics of that story? What am I doing? Am I trying to ring the contractor? Am I living in the completed building of whatever I want to manifest? And I've used that as a template for many manifestations because it is so well worded and and it's very systematic the mechanics of it is very systematic so yes. yeah that story is still one of my absolute neville go-to's it is a brilliant how they wrote that story was just astounding yes yeah yeah i i, I also love that story as well and like you said that's a fantastic example yeah. and also uh you know neville talks about he's like hey when when you really get clear and you step in and you embody you truly believe, boldly believe, you are the man you want to be. You are the woman you want to be. Yeah. You don't have to lift a finger. The whole world reshapes itself, mm. mold to your conception of yourself. Yeah. And the, the whole, you don't have to lift a finger part. I was always like, but, and, and I get questions about this all the time. It's like, well, what about inspired action? Yeah. Okay. If it's inspired, it really doesn't feel like lifting a finger. It just it doesn't. Is, yeah. Right. It's not. There's no yeah. resistance. There's no action. Yes. It just, it feels lovely and beautiful. So yes, yeah. inspired action. Yeah. And if it feels like work, you know, yeah. are, are you building a house that, that you're supposed to be living in the end of, right? So it's yeah. like always kind of checking back in. What is my state? Am I really believing this is real? Or am I hoping that it's real and then trying to make it happen? Exactly. And I know when, you know, because people have often asked me that question, how do I know it's inspired action or I'm trying to make it happen? You know, inspiration is like this push from behind and you just go, yes. whoosh, like it's yes. just literally an energy line of energy. It just. Yes. The wind at your back. Yes. yes. It's I'm a so wind at your you back. Said that. Yes. Mm, I, yeah. I feel it. I feel it quite literally in my body. It's yeah. like this might sound a little weird, but if you've ever had this happen, it'll, you'll be like, Oh my God, that's what that was. It's like, it's almost like something takes over in a way. And it's yes. like, I switch to observer and things just happen in yeah. front of me. And yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. I'll find myself all of a sudden like a gust of wind in my back. And all of a sudden I'm like pulled a certain direction and I meet someone yeah. like just out of the blue. Or all of a sudden I like, I find myself picking up my phone and calling someone and I had no conscious intention to call them yeah but i'm just like this is happening and then they yeah. pick up the phone and like things are happening and the conversation is perfect things are dropping yeah. into place when it's inspired action you literally click into this channel and it just yeah. blows you on blow you know like wind at your yeah. back just blows you right where you need to be and your cat example is a great ex example of that you put this thing on instagram you start living from it you're living yeah. in the end you draw the little cat on what you've bought and then yeah. this random person that you probably haven't spoken to for a while goes, hang on a minute, yep. <laughs> jumps in to finish off your, yes. you know, and Neville talks about this thing. And I loved how he, and it was where he went to the, the army and he talked about that when he wanted to be honorably discharged, he said this one sentence about the Colonel didn't know that he was under the influence of my suggestion. Yeah, And I love that because that's what happens. People that you don't even know, I mean, in that case, he knew the Colonel, but many times, like your friend that pops in through Instagram, you don't know who's going to watch or look at your Instagram. You're just living in the end. Yes. He came in the back door and then it's the perfect cat. And it's like those things, if you create that line of energy between you and the desire and you're living in the state from it, not in the old man, which is I haven't got, I haven't got, I haven't got, it does start to, it's like it solidifies. Yeah. And, it, and it's the particles assemble themselves and they click in. I yes. remember a few times, Josiah, where I was doing this intense imaginal work and I uh, probably about three or four times 
I remember I'd be sitting in meditation and I'd be imagining and I was really honing in my clarity and I would literally hear like shattered glass. It was like I walked through a pain of energy and the old energy just went yes. and it shattered. And I felt then it was like it created this vacuum and then whoosh, the manifestation would come in. Yes. But I remember hearing this on numerous occasions where I would walk through and the glass would just literally bust into a thousand pieces. And I remember thinking, wow, this is like a sound barrier. And, and a visual barrier and an energy barrier all at the same time. And I remember thinking, wow, that is profound. And I haven't had it since. It was probably 10 years ago, maybe even 15. But just us talking about it now reminds me of it. And it was like, this is so, you go into, you know, like that movie Inception, you drop through these dream yes. levels and you drop and you drop and you drop and you get deeper more clarity, more quickly, more manifestations with the more you keep your hands off, the more you keep your, your line of energy between you and it and you drop off all that peripheral about any of it, whatever it is, doubt, worry, not clarity, when's it going to happen, how's it going to happen, and you start yes. meddling in that and you hone in on that tight focus, it speeds up incredible things. Dramatically, yes. Yes, and I, I love that description of, of the, the, the energy pain. It's like you literally shattered the old, the old energy. Yeah. <laughs> that was your state. You literally yeah. shattered the old state, which created the space to step into the new state. Yeah. And one thing for me that I've just found to be um, kind of a linchpin for this, when I, I know that I've arrived, when I, can, I really get that level of clarity, yeah. my external physical world doesn't matter at yes. all. Yes. Yes. And I just feel profound gratitude, yeah. profound gratitude, because I know that, again, garden of forking paths, yeah. I know that I found that path, I know that I'm now walking it, and the evidence of my senses doesn't matter anymore. I'm already expressing gratitude, which of course is the state of receiving. Yep. I'm already expressing gratitude for my dream, even though I don't have, you know, signs follow, they do not proceed, right? I yeah. don't have the signs yet, but I'm yeah. already in a state of gratitude knowing that it is true because I'm living. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Josiah, what do you think is your, like when you look back at all the stories you've read in different books of Neville's and lectures and things, what do you think's the story that really, really affected you in a really amazing way? Hmm. And there might not be one might be. more. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's, there's so much. Yeah. There's so much. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's, um, you know, Neville throughout his career, you know, he, he started really talking about the law, which, you know, is another way of saying the law of attraction, like really drawing things, drawing things to you, physical manifestations, physical states, things like that. And then later in his career, he starts talking about the promise, which yes. is really waking up and realizing like, I am all imagination. It's like, um, you know, in the, in the student group, our, our little phrase for that is OMG IG. Oh my God, I'm God, or oh my God, God <laughs> is being me, right? So it's like, he, he starts talking about that later on. And it's interesting yeah. because at that phase of the human story, on the, in the royal sense, uh, if, if you kind of go back and you, and you look at, at what was happening around that time, he, he lost followers because yes. he really started to focus on this higher dimensional thing. And a lot of people are like, no, I, I really just came here for my mansion, or I just really came yeah. here for my cars or whatever it was, right? And he kind of got like, they're like, this is a little bit weird. Yeah. Not in 2019. In 2019, yeah. humans on the royal sense, the human journey in royal sense is on a different level. Mm. And I think that, that we as humanity are, are more prepared now than we've ever been to talk about the promise. Mm. And I remember when I first started listening to Neville, I was like, okay, the law, yep, that sounds like a law of attraction stuff. And then he started to talk about the promise and I was like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, the rabbit hole goes really deep. Yeah. And at first I wasn't sure about it. In fact, when I go back and I listen to the, some of the first lectures I read where he starts talking about the, the promise, yeah, I, could, I can even hear it in my voice now when I go back and I listen to my voice back then, I was like, man, I really wasn't quite sure <laughs> about some of that stuff that I was reading. I was like, this, this is a little out there. Yeah. But something about me, again, struck a chord. And I was like, there's, there's truth here. Yeah. And I started to tune into it. Yeah. And the more I've started to tune into it more and more and more, the start more I've started to realize it's true. 
and it can be embodied. Yeah. And you reach a certain point where, and, and he, he prophesies this is the case. Like he says, this is the case. He's like, at a certain point, like the things of the world aren't all that important to you anymore. And you start mm. kind of expanding to another level. And um, for me, that's always been the most beautiful aspect of his teaching. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's like, you know, I've, I've, had, I've had money in my life. I've had really nice houses in my life. I've driven really nice cars in my life. I've had amazing partners. I'm, I'm blessed to be in a long-term relationship with an amazing partner right now. I've, I've had a lot of the trappings of yeah. physical success, had and lost. I've, I've literally experienced all of it, like yeah. in, in my life to date. I've had a lot of the trappings of material success in my life. And it, I thought it was going to be satisfying. And there was a part of me that still wasn't satisfied. Mm. And so, you know, it's like using devil to attract things. Okay, yes, and, and yes, do it, but understand that it's, it's not the things that are going to make you happy. And I feel like when we start talking this way, it's like law of attraction, like 101 on some level. Yeah. Right? Like everybody always says it's a cliche, like, you know, your happiness is from within. But it's so, tr- it's so incredibly true that, you yeah. know, sometimes these truths become, you dismiss them as just cliches. Yeah. But it is so true. And I started to realize that, when I really put my state ahead of everything else that appears to be going on, my I am all awareness of being, that is my fundamental state of consciousness and everything else on top of that is a story that I'm telling myself Mm. in one way or another. When I really tune into that, it opens the door to profound joy on a whole nother level. Yeah. And so when you ask me like, what's, what's the most beautiful, you know, story or what have I really like, it's, it's just been really like kind of understanding that the story started like, Hey, you, your dreams can come true. Yes. And then evolved into like, life is not what I used to think it was. Life is something entirely different mm. and it's far more beautiful than I could have possibly. Yeah. Imagined. Yeah. Yes. And waking up mentally undisturbed, feeling peace, being at ease, feeling free, feeling calm. Yes. I think those things have been the greatest things that I've been able to, you know, I'm not there all the time, but a heck of a lot more than I used to be. Yes. And Absolutely. that, like you say, is priceless and something that money can't buy is something that, no matter where you live, it doesn't matter where you live, who you're with, what you do, what you drive, what you're wearing, what, you know, any of that, like you say, that is such an incredible thing to access. And it does grow over time. It does. It does. I mean, I look back in my twenties, I was so disturbed mentally. (laughs) Likewise. Totally. Yes. (laughs) You know, it's, it's people like us, Anya, that find this stuff though. That's yeah. the thing to understand. Yes. Yeah. That's how we know we're on the path. Yeah, exactly. You go searching. I'm really disturbed. Somebody yeah. help me. I, I, <laughs> I need help. Up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, there's this song on, yes, it goes, um, it goes, I lost all my riches. Turns out this was the best thing that ever happened to me because this is how I found the diamonds in the mind. Yeah. I don't know if I can say it better than that. Lovely. Who said that? Um, it's called. Uh, That's I'll, lovely. I'll find it. I'll find That's it. Lovely. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really good one. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Very it's, beautiful. Yeah. So, so eloquently said and so true because when you have, when you appear to have everything, then you're not really, you're not really looking. But yeah. when you become profoundly aware of this yearning for something further, like that's really when you discover mm. the diamonds in your own mind. And that really is the most beautiful part. Yeah. And it's like the Wizard of Oz. They went to see the wizard. And then they get there and it's just some, you know, guy with behind a curtain operating, you know, this facade. Yes. <laughs> And the lesson was you had it inside of you all along. You didn't come here for the courage. You didn't come here for, you know, all the different things that they all wanted in the Wizard of Oz. You had it within you all the time. And that story 
we've learned that since we were kids, not really realizing the importance of the meaning of that as adults, what was okay. being actually taught, how profound how the person that wrote that. Yes. Yes. And you know, it's interesting because when I go back now and I look at my childhood and yeah. things like the Disney movies and like all these types of things, yeah. it, it was around us the whole time. Yes. On some level. It's, yeah. it's been here the whole time on some level. Yeah. But it's, does it click? Or, yeah. or I guess more precisely is when, when does it click? Right. Because yeah. as Neville says, it, it will click for everyone eventually. Yeah. Like when, when does it yeah. click for you? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's like you, like you're saying with Neville, you go back and you read things and there, there's deeper levels of Neville. It's like you go back to these old childhood things and you see things that, oh my God, I just saw that. And I now get as an adult, what the heck that meant when I'm viewing yeah. it through these eyes of understanding. It's such a different story. So yeah, it's, um, it's such an amazing journey. I think you know, I mean, I, like you, I listened, to, I did listen to a lot of Abraham Hicks. I still listen to Esther from time to time, but that whole thing that she talks about and she says it so much, you almost don't even hear it anymore. The art of allowing, the art of yes. allowing, the art of allowing. Yes. And it really is about relaxing. It's about calming down. It's about the turtle wins the race. It's about stop the rush, stop the obsession, stop the doubt, stop the fear and just lean back away from things and just wait for it to come to you. Yes. You're not on a chasing mission anymore. Yeah. You know, Anya, what, what we said at the beginning of the conversation before we went live here, yeah. um, it's, it's like, it can't, in my opinion, it cannot be understated. It's like, how do you do that? How do yeah. you relax? How do you let go of the yes. doubt? How do you let go of the fear? For me, for me, the key to that, like I'm literally going to give you the, the, the key here, and I think you agree with me, it's self-care. It's yes. self-love and self-care. <laughs> and all the time people will be like, I, I'm living in the end and I just don't know what to do. Like, yeah. how, what do I do now? Like, I'm really clear. Relax. Self-care. Right. Literally understand that it's, it's not about what's coming. It's about yeah. how you feel right now. Yeah. And the key to that is self-care. So yeah. I, I have to say my, my self-care game, like I literally look at it as a game. How well can I treat myself? Today. Yeah. Right, right now in this yeah. moment, what, what can I do to really make myself feel that yeah. joy, feel that love, feel that gratitude for the ever present perfect moment yeah. right now? Yeah. yeah. Well said, Josiah. That is destined for a t-shirt. <laughs> yes, <right? laughs> That's perfect. Yes. I will happily wear that t-shirt. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yep. I'm just going to imagine that real. Exactly. That's the next little business sprouting. The there you go. Branch off the tree. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Awesome. I, I did find that song. It's called Peace of Mind. Yeah. Go figure. Go figure. It's called Peace ah, of Mind. Ah, okay. Yep. So it was and a song. It wasn't a poem a or something. Okay. No, it's, it's a song. Yep. Lovely. And it's um, by Above and Beyond. Okay. We'll put the so, link to that down below. Throw that out there. Yeah, I can send you the yeah. link. There. But yeah, it's a, it's a great Excellent. song. Excellent. Yep. Lovely. Well, have you, my goodness, we've talked for quite a while. Do you want to say anything else? Is anything else jumping into your head? Well, the only other thing I would say is that if, if this idea of exploring what Neville Goddard teaches in a college class-like format appeals to you, yep. I am doing another 99-day course at the end of this year. Yep. It's going to run September 23rd to December 31st. Ah, lovely. So great way. It's like day 100, graduation day is going to be January 1st, 2020. Beautiful. Great way to set up a brand new year, brand new yep. outlook, and perfect clarity, right? Twenty Excellent. Days. Yeah. So, yep. And, um, you know, Beautiful. my website, nextlevelneville.com, yep. mailing list. I'm sending out information about that over the coming months as we get ready to enroll on that. And would, cool. if that calls to you, great. I'd, I'd love to have you be a part of it. Yeah. And we will, when I upload this, I'm going to put, we'll put the links to your channel, to your website, and to what you've just said now. That way, people can just go there directly. Perfect. Easy for them to find you. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has Thank been you, fabulous, fabulous. Yes. Well, we're going to sign off. Do you want to say goodbye, Josiah? Yes. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and imagine wisely, my friends.
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will see you in the usual place with another YouTube to be continued. Okay.